Israel is the cradle of our common civilization. It's the crucible of our common values. And the modern state of Israel was, was founded precisely on these eternal values. And this is why Israel's more than one million Muslims enjoy full democratic rights. Netanyahu repeated some points of that, saying that, you know, Israel is the exemplary nation when it comes to democracy and being practiced as compared to surrounding Arab states or it's North African joke. states. It's yeah. a complete joke. But Congress joke. believe him. Lebanon is a democracy, far more of a democracy than Israel is. Mm -hmm. Israel is not a democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly not a democracy for uh, Palestinians in the occupied territories. Mm -hmm. And uh, as it seeks to become a Jewish state rather than a state for Israeli citizens, it's disenfranchising two million Arab Israelis yes. who feel distinctly uncomfortable uh, in a society that progressively becomes Jewish. Israel, in a way, is like a spoilt child that's gone to see its grandmother, Grandmother gives it the sweet jar, says, have a sweet, dear, and the child puts its hand and grabs three sweets, and it can't get its hand out, and it can't enjoy the sweets until it lets go of one of them. Mm -hmm. Israel wants to be a democracy at the grown-up club. It wants to be a Jewish state, and it wants the West Bank and Golan. It can't have all three. Mm -hmm. It gives up the West Bank, gives up the Golan, allows an independent, sovereign Palestinian state. Everyone will recognize its existence. Its borders, uh, borders are defined. And that's the two-state solution. Mm -hmm. But if it won't give up the settlements, then the two states dead in the water. It's a dead parrot. If it won't give up the, two st uh, the, the West Bank, it must give up being a Jewish state. Mm -hmm. And that was what the American Civil War was all about. Was America going to be two states or one? Slavery in the South mm -hmm. and freedom mm -hmm. in the North or one state for everyone? Netanyahu gave that speech in Congress yeah. after President Obama has said that he's going to be looking at the 1967 borders. borders yeah. A lot of Palestinians were angry against Barack Obama because there's a lot of things still not said, like he wanted land exchanges yes. with the occupied uh, territories and all that, which is not palatable to a lot of Palestinians. But even then, Netanyahu still debunked what Obama said. Exactly. You look at the you look at the map. The facts on the ground, Israel has created a Swiss cheese in the occupied territories. It's not contiguous. You cannot travel from Ramallah to Nablus to Bethlehem, mm -hmm. Jericho. They are Bantu stands. It's like when you spill water on a hot surface, what happens? It evaporates. And the Israelis are evaporating the Palestinian areas mm -hmm. into isolated pockets, like Indian reservations. They're either going to have to give up the West Bank or give up being a Jewish state and give everyone one man, one vote. And they're not going to do that. If they won't give up the West Bank, they won't give up being a Jewish state, they have to recognize they are an apartheid state. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's worse than South Africa, because at least in South Africa, the whites subsidized and created the Bantu stands. Israel is certainly not subsidizing the West Bank. It's penalizing mm -hmm. the Palestinians. And they're building walls. The wall is entirely illegal. The wall is not for security. How can a president who came to power like President Obama win the masses mm. views on this because if we look well, at the Arab for Spring, it. for he's example. paying for it. The, unfortunately, going back to our earlier conversation, the um, political system in North America, in the United States, is heavily dependent on funding, campaign funding, and the significant proportion of the funding of both Democrats and Republicans comes from the Israel lobby. What do they get for it? They get compliance. Uh, it's Christmas Day. Every day Obama goes to Washington. He gets whatever he wants, five, six billion dollars a year uh, into, into the coffers to pay for the settlements, pay for the bypass roads and the apartheid wall. Provided it's not that countries around the world, including in Asia, hmm. you know, because we're talking about the rise of China and the rise of India, right. Indonesia even nearer to our shores. Um, it's not that they don't care about the plight of the Palestinian. Hmm. It's just that Israel has more to offer strategically for any nation. That's partly the case. It also depends upon what leaders think in terms of their own strategic interests. There's no particular reason why the Indian elite should consider it strategically useful mm -hmm. for them to align, align themselves with uh, uh, Israel. There are many people who are in the, even in the Indian elite who say, no, our interest lies in promoting democratization, balancing against the United States of America, and of mm -hmm. course, following the policy of supporting uh, Palestine like we've always done. But uh, uh, there's always a contest uh, in those terms here. 
But uh, in the Indian case, you have to recognize that there's been the rise of Hindu nationalism, okay. which has also influenced mm -hmm. thinking. Mm -hmm. And there's a kind of ideological affinity between Zionism and Hindu nationalism. Mm -hmm. okay. So that is an important factor uh, mm -hmm. uh, to also consider when you know, we see about the relations that have emerged here. But going back to your uh, discussion, I mean, um, Goebbels of Nazi Germany yes. uh, uh, found the technique, famous. if you repeat lies repeatedly and often enough, mm -hmm. lots of people will start believing. And when Netanyahu says that there is full rights for Palestinians, it's a lie. Hmm? Even for the, uh, forget about those in the occupied territories, which yes. is obvious, but even within Israel, about the one million um, uh, um, uh, Arabs that he's talking about, Palestinians are talking about, they do not have a whole range of welfare rights that uh, Jews have. They do not even have the right to love, the freedom to marry whomever they wish to mm -hmm. and whoever they fall in love with. Because if an Arab a Palestinian in Israel wants to marry a, uh, another person from the occupied territories or uh, happens to be a Muslim, they get very, very worried. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they're panicked now about the fact that there are 20% who are Palestinians and that their birth rate is higher and they're worried about what the implications. So this business about having equal rights is nonsense. And what does that mean? It means that this business of Israel calling itself a democracy is fundamentally wrong. It is not a democracy. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are too many people in the West who still continue to believe that it's a democracy. Okay, I have to go for the last commercial break, but once we are back, I'd like to go back to Reverend and look at how maybe if we talk about all these kind of injustices, it will not just be confined towards the policies in Gaza and West Bank. If we don't stop it there, it can easily be repeated in another sense or at another level in different industries, for example, commerce and trade, where humanity, just values will take a back seat to maybe commercial interests and corporate interests, for example. So how do you look at you know, the dismantling of the real beliefs of religion here too? purposes like this, for example, because it can easily be replicated to other means. We'll discuss that after this short break. We'll go for the last one and we'll come back to discuss that. Okay. Reverend, how, how do you speak, especially to the audience back at home? You know, you've been in a lot of forums, even maybe in your yes. own church. Because maybe it's as if you're speaking to two sets of audience which you cannot see physically, of course. One said that saying whether he's anti-Semitic or he's, he's for us, he's, 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 you know, he's yes. championing the rights of the Jews, for example. So how can we go beyond that? Because we want to talk about the rule of law. We want to talk how there's only one God and God has asked us to do all these good things, regardless of color and creed or whatever it is, for example. How do you get past the dichotomy of now? There's a story that Jesus told, we, talk, we, call, we call it the Good Samaritan, about the guy on a road who gets beaten up, he's left half dead, and people come along the road and they bypass him, they pass by on the other side. And, and Jesus gave, told the story to answer a question, who is my neighbour? He was being asked by a lawyer, draw a line in the sand, tell me who's my neighbour, who I've got a responsibility for, who I can ignore. And he tells the story about the man who falls, uh, he's beaten up and, and left in the road, people walk by on the other side, and then a Samaritan comes along, one of the enemy, and he stops, and he helps the guy, and then Jesus says, which of the, th which of the travellers was a good neighbour? But the point of the story was not that the Samaritan was the enemy and he stop to help his enemy. That's not the point. Jesus put something in the middle of the story. He said the guy was naked and he was half dead. He was beaten up and they stripped him of his clothes. It reduced him to the level of being a human being. And the question is, are you going to stop for a human being or not? Not one mm -hmm. of us, mm -hmm. not one of them. And so when we start to treat people as us and them, the good guys and the bad guys, we've, we've, we're down on a slippery slope that will lead to uh, car sled in Gaza or the, or the gas chambers or the, or the ghettos. Uh, we have to treat everyone the same, uh, treat them as we would expect to be treated, irrespective of their race. It's not racist to accuse a government of being racist. Mm -hmm. And yes, anti-Semitism is, is evil, racism is evil, but to challenge a government about its policies toward the Palestinians is not anti-Semitic. Is that happening more and more? Because 
because we do know there's a lot of supporters on the other side too. But uh, we're seeing the rise of far-right political parties in Europe, BNP in UK, mm -hmm. Sweden are having for the first time what seems like a far-right political movement. So multiculturalism and diversity might not be news here, but mm. it might be something relatively new in Europe. So if that is not settled, then how can they have empathy with the plight of the Palestinians? The irony is that the far right in Britain is forming an alliance with Zionists because their common enemy are the Muslims. Mm -hmm. And it's ironic that the very people who favoured uh, the work of, uh, of Hitler are now working with the Zionists, the English Defence League, for example, against uh, the Muslims because they, sh they, share, they, they view them as a threat. Prof. Yeah, well, um, uh, again, I mean, um, on the Palestinian question, I'll tell you something that did surprise me, yeah. and that here in Malaysia it seems to be considered to be a kind of Muslim issue. Mm -hmm. And it's not. Uh, you don't have to be black to be opposed to apartheid. Okay. And many people who are not black but yes. white were strongly opposed. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be Vietnamese to be opposed to what the United States uh, did there. And you don't have to be a Palestinian or a Muslim. You just have to have a sense of uh, our universal humanity. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's uh, very, very uh, important. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something we should um, recognize. We have different multiple identities, and one of our identities is that mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, of uh, communists. So, so as we go towards uh, deeper into the 21st century, the Arab Spring, nobody saw that coming, not mm -hmm. even the fervent analysts of the Middle East. So if we look at that, because governments have failed, six decades over of the Palestinian-Israel issues has not been changed much in that sense, mm -hmm. even with President Barack Obama leading America. But if you look at the Arab Spring, it's the voices of people, civil society, for example. Right. Will that be the real hope for Palestinians? I believe it is. In the same way, did we honestly think that apartheid would end without a war in South Africa or the Berlin Wall would come down without without conflict. It came down for the same reason we're seeing the Arab Spring. People are tired in Egypt, in Jordan and other countries of governments that suppress the people and their freedoms and their human rights. The younger generation to YouTube, Facebook, they know through the internet what's happening in the rest of the world and they want to share those freedoms. Freedom of movement, freedom of expression, freedom to wear what they want, uh, freedom Basic for Provided you share the same oh, opinion. absolutely. In fact, what's happened in the last 20 years is that um, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, you have a number of governments, as you yourself pointed out earlier, who have shifted their sort of inclinations towards Israel. Yeah. But the great compensation is that in the last 20 years, the upsurge in civil society everywhere, even within the United States, in Europe and all, a younger generation is emerging which doesn't have the hang-ups of the older generation. Mm -hmm. And there is much greater awareness about the injustice that is being done to the Palestinians. And that's expressing itself in so many ways. It's very recently that we've had things that we didn't have before. The land convoys, mm -hmm. the freedom flotillas. Yes. In fact, Viva Palestine, uh, Palestina here mm -hmm. in Malaysia yeah. has played a very, very important role in doing this thing. And that is, of course, something that's to be greatly admired and appreciated. That's what we're hoping for, a major breakthrough. Six decades of suffering is enough already. It's for all humanity to consider. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you so much, Thank Reverend you. Doctor, for making time. Thanks to you. Terima kasih banyak kerana menonton. Hantarkan pandangan anda seri bersuruh pandang astro.com.my ataupun Facebook dan Twitter awal ini. Sekian, selamat malam dan terima kasih. Thank you so much. It's a good way to end. Well done. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.